With Liam Malone winning gold in the 400 metres today, New Zealand's position on the Paralympic medal table is 15 places higher than it was in Beijing and 12 places higher than it was in London. Now sitting at ninth overall and number one by a distance when calculated on a per capita basis, New Zealand's performance is vindication of a stock taking that occurred after the 2008 Games. Paralympic bosses simply wanted to do better and they set about achieving exactly that. In 2008 at Beijing, New Zealand won five gold medals, 12 medals overall, and finished 24th on the medal table, 24th. It was okay, but they wanted better. So, Paralympics New Zealand did something they'd never done before. They launched an ad campaign, Wanted Athletes. So we actually, we advertised over the radio and newspapers and we ran a quite a, a targeted um, and aggressive talent ID program called Exaggerate to Excellence. And we found um, a, a number of the athletes that are here now, the likes of the Roy McSweeney's, the Chess Hamels, the Holly Robinsons, we, we found those athletes. Yes, they effectively answered ads, or someone who knew them did. And eight years later, compared to Beijing, gold medals up 80% to 9, overall medals up 50% to 18, and position on the medal table up from 24th to 9th in the world. It's a radical improvement. So I called Malcolm Hum, the team's high performance director, to ask... I'm looking at the middle table. New Zealand 9, Italy 10, Canada 12, Ireland 14, France 17, Greece 22, Korea 24. Why is New Zealand ahead of those countries with much, much bigger populations? Yeah, that's a, it's a really good question, John. It's interesting because we're actually in the same apartment block as the Canadians at the moment, so we're, we're making sure they know about that as well. But I think it's, it comes back to our targeted approach, John. Um, back in 2008, once again, we we made a decision that we were going to we were going to try and target um, a white spread of sports. Um, we were going to target sports with individual athletes that had multiple medals opportunities. Yes, with finite resources, Paralympics New Zealand started backing athletes in more targeted ways. Their aim to find and support... Sports with individual athletes that had multiple medals opportunities. Multiple medal opportunities. It worked. Sophie Pascoe. Three golds, two silvers in Rio. Liam Malone, two golds, one silver in Rio. Nikita Howarth, one gold, one bronze in Rio. Ten medals between three athletes. The best way to get winners is to pick them, then back them like you mean it. They're not rich, but the top Paralympians do get financial support. So, um, yes, our athletes now are having the opportunities to be, you know, be full time athletes. They might be doing a little bit of study or a little bit of work on the side, but they do have the opportunities to be able to, um, to be able to train uh, to become the best in the world. And as I say, a lot of that is through, you know, the sport through high performance sport in New Zealand, but also through being able to provide our athletes with high quality coaches as well. But money and high quality coaches are a finite resource, of course. So how do they find the athletes in order to support them like that? Where are future Paralympians discovered? Well, first of all, and this is important... If you talk to them, they don't see it as a disability. Which means the Paralympics talent spotters have to sometimes go in search of them in the abled-bodied world, for want of a better description. Remember Nikita Howarth, who's won a gold and a bronze, and told us yesterday how she was discovered? A guy called Malcolm Hunt came up to me and asked me, um, or told my mum that I was quite good in the pool. That guy called Malcolm is the Malcolm I'm talking to. He's not a swimming expert, he'll tell you himself. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a swimmer, I, I don't know swimming that well, but when I saw Nikita in the water, I knew it was something very, very special. So um, it really started there, talking to her parents around what the opportunities were. And look, Nikita went on to London to get a, a, a you know a sixth placing, and then obviously delivered a gold and a, and a bronze medal here. So she's an exciting story, and obviously you know still um, a, a young you know teenager, and obviously um, a real Tokyo prospect as well. How old was she when you saw her? When you say that you recognise something special, even though you don't know swimming very well, what? what how old was she? Yeah, I think she's about eight or nine years old. You see, Malcolm, I just want to stop you there. How the hell did you know she was eight or nine? Uh, look, look, um, I'm not sure if you, you know, you're aware of her disability, but you know, she, she's both arms are below amputees, but she could swim very, very fast. And I think from the naked eye, um, a lot of people would have thought that's 
bloody extraordinary for such a young girl. Bloody extraordinary might nicely sum it up. From the relative disappointment of Beijing, 24th on the table, to 9th in the world in Rio. This has been an effort of planning, architecture, backing and determination. A success story. Identify your potential winners, support them, and then pair them with the very best coaches you can get. We were not a financially resource like some of these bigger nations, but we, oh, I guess, with, I feel we, we've just done things a little bit smarter and um, a little bit better as well, especially in the coaching front. Malcolm Hun, who was Paralympics New Zealand's high performance manager.